Hi! So today somebody on Reddit was asking how you can make custom data structures like trees and stuff in the GDScript language for Godot. So I figured let's make a video about that. So first of all I'm just going to create an empty script. Let's call it tree. So we can make a tree structure out of that. Give an empty template and open that. Okay, we don't actually need to extend anything here. What we do need is a function called init. So this function is how we can initialize our values. So what we can do here, let's see, we can say val1 equals zero, var val2 equals empty string. Those are just some default values we can have in our tree. And then a tree is basically just a node that has multiple children potentially, which are again nodes of the same type. So we can just say var children equals an empty list. Now you can add some extra code to assure that everything is of the correct type. I'm not gonna do that right now. This is just a quick example of how to do stuff. So what I can do here is instead I can just say param1 param2 to have our parameters and val1 equals param1 and val2 equals param2. So this is basically an entirely functional tree since our children can just be additional trees. Every subtree is again a tree of its own. Now if we go into an empty 2D scene or whatever, it doesn't really matter. I just want something that I can run in the game. Get a ready function. And let's see, var tree equals preload. And where's our stuff anyway? res tree.gd, I think. Then ready I can say var my tree equals tree dot new 100 comma text just to pass its two values yeah save it uh, no not there save it here One. so now just like defined here we are passing it a first value that's an integer a second value that's a string just in here using the init function and let's see first of all it should just run and basically do nothing What's the debugger saying? Oh, that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 I can ignore that, that doesn't matter. That is from a previous thing I did in the same file. I'll just clean that up quick. And yeah, it's running, no issues, it's not really doing anything. Let's output something here. Print my tree dot val1. And now it's outputting our 100. So it is properly saving the values. Now what we can do is we can either add functions here to add children and stuff. Like that's probably the clean way to do it is to have a set get for all of these values and then to have like an append function. Uh, let's say func append or add or whatever you want to call it child children dot append child you know stuff like that we can we can make we can add some functions to easily add children to our node now if we go here we can say var my sub tree equals tree dot new 50 comma a b c d and i can say my tree dot append my subtree since we just defined an append function we can use it and then i can say my tree dot children first child dot file 2 and output that. Well, I didn't print it, so it's not going to do anything. Print. And A, B, C, D. So yeah, as you can see, even if it's not really doing anything, it's just hanging around in memory. 
and you can use it as a data structure to save just about anything really. So in this case it's just a pretty much fully functional tree structure. If you want to change that and instead of having an arbitrary tree with any amount of children you can turn it into a binary tree. So we can say var left child equals now I guess right child equals now and now we can change this stuff like this is no longer valid actually let's keep the append function if left child is now left child uh, equals child else if right child equals now right child equals child else we can call left child dot append child. If we're trying to append something and there's no space on this level, we pass it to the next, stuff like that. This is really a design thing. You can put in all the features or none of the features of a tree the way it would be implemented in a computer science class or whatever. Since this is pretty much just an arbitrary class, you can pretty much use any object-oriented formats here. Like if you find any code for object orientation in Python, for example, you could essentially just translate this to go dot more or less one to one. Just plug everything in here and use the new constructor to add some values. You can change the values later, of course, just like we can call things we can also say my tree dot file one equals 20 now we can change that easy stuff you can iterate over it if you just have a loop that always checks if in this case we have a left and a right child so if your loop always checks does this have a left child if so follow left if not continue all of that is possible just fine with a pretty easy data structure like this part is optional. Technically, technically for a binary tree, this is all you really need to define a left child and a right child. Everything else you can handle elsewhere. Or you can implement fancy convenience functions down here that you can just call and work on. Really up to you. I just wanted to show that there is actually a pretty easy way to implement an empty class that has only the very necessary stuff, so you don't add a lot of bloat to your project. And you can still put in whatever data you want and add children to your tree. My tree dot left child equals my sub tree. That should run. It shouldn't output anything because I didn't use any print output here. But I think that will be all for today. Bye.